Hey everybody, welcome to Cody Tarot. I'm your tarot reader, Cody. So for today's pick a card, what we're gonna be doing is what is coming into your life next or what are you attracting into your life right now? So these are gonna be kind of things that you're drawing in that the universe is kind of prepping you for, ready to deliver to your doorstep. Um, this could be good news. Uh, this could be some challenges. This could be something that is maybe challenges you to grow or kind of is the next life lesson to learn as well. So this is kind of like the reading that I did with what blessings are coming in, but it's also going to be just kind of like what's coming in in general, what's coming in in the next stage of life. Um, I'm going to be pulling a, from a lot of decks today. So I'm really excited for that. Or I have like specific decks I want to pull from. So We'll be getting into that when we get into the pile. So let me show you the crystals and then I'll give you a moment to choose and then we can get right into the reading. So for our first, first group, we have pile one. We have this Kunzite. For pile two, we have this blue Kyanite. For pile three, our last pile, we have this piece of amber. Light yellow, golden amber. So take all the time you need to pick your crystal. You can pause the video here if you need to. Now, without further ado, let's get right into the first group with the pink kunzite. Hey, group one, this is if you picked the um, pink kunzite right here. Kunzite is a cool stone and it helps with like transforming with love relationships and stuff like that. Transforming from kind of like, sometimes it helps with transforming from a poor relationship into a good one or kind of leaving past things behind, past like stories behind that you, that you write for yourself in love relationships. So let's get into your, um, let's get into your cards. I'm going to pull a Moonology Manifestation card, and we have a few cards we're getting through today. So this first one is the Moonology Manifestation deck. Feeling like drawing really quickly for this group. And we have Step Into Your Power, First Quarter Moon in Aries. Let's lay that over there. I can know where the center is. Um... How are you guys? Just so you know, you can skip ahead. You can skip, scroll ahead from the shuffling and skip ahead that way. Um, if you don't like the shuffling, I'll, I'll pretty much do the, just most of the reading there. But if you want to stick around for the shuffling, feel free. Okay, let's get you a love story oracle card. So if you guys have any tarot decks that you like using, let me know in the comments because I'm kind of in the mood to purchase some new ones and I'm not quite sure which ones to get. I just, I'm the kind of person who gets kind of content with the decks that I have and so um, I just use them again and again. So, but I kind of want to get something new for you guys on the channel, something different. Okay, let's see what your love story oracle card is. We have Forgiveness. And then I want to get you a finance message too, so we can kind of give an all around picture of the blessings or at least the flavor of the blessings coming in. This one wants to come out. We have unfulfilled. And I'm also going to pull some tarot cards. And I'm also going to pull some tea leaf oracle cards.
I kind of want to also pull a Crystal Wisdom card. I'm just feeling like a lot of cards today for some reason. So that's this deck. It's really, really pretty deck. Um, let's see. Crystal Wisdom deck. We have... The cards are all over the place today. Like, they're flying around like crazy. We have Scolocyte. Looks like that. And the back says, I'm an instrument of peace. Okay, let's flip up your cards and see what you got. For your first tarot card, we have the Seven of Pentacles. And for your first tea leaf card, we have Lily, Spiritual Love. For your next tarot card, we have the Three of Cups with um, Door Opportunities Are Waiting For You. And then we also have the Sun with um, Tent, Temporary Situation. Okay, I'm just going to start getting into reading the cards and um, we'll go from there. So there's a few things coming in. Um, the main things that I'm seeing overlooking the whole reading is that in relationships, you're going to have a lot of power in the upcoming. That's kind of the next big thing that you're attracting is power in your relationships. Um, there is kind of a little bit of a thing here that the cards want to point out that I feel like lately you've almost been wanting to attract wealth or you've been wanting to attract specific types of money opportunities. We see that here at the Seven of Pentacles and the Unfulfilled card. And it's kind of showing me that right now is not the time for money to be coming in. It's just one of those things where it's like there's a there's kind of like a bigger plan for that that department of your life and money will be coming in later. It's just right now there's kind of like if you want to have like specific career aspirations or something along those lines. Um, it would be, you would be waiting quite a while if you're only focusing on career. This is kind of an interesting reading because I'm definitely seeing that there's kind of a shift in balance. There's a shift in energy. And I think that's what's coming in for you guys um, with, especially with forgiveness here and the three of cups here, there is some kind of aspect of forgiving someone in your life that was a part of some kind of community of friends. Now, this could be a community of family, but because I'm not getting the Ten of Cups, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and incline to say that this is going to be someone that's a friend or someone that you used to go out and socialize with, that you used to hang out with, that was in a specific social group. And I definitely see that with forgiveness, you're kind of building those ties back together with that person and kind of weaving in that kind of forgiving type of energy with them in order to create kind of a new social, like... Um, what's it called? Blitz or flurry. There's kind of a lot of about um, feeling really fulfilled in your social life, and in your kind of um, three of cups can also represent like parties or celebrations or something along the, those lines. So the one the one thing I want to get back to real quick is if you're in this reading, you're like, oh, I just want my career to take off. Like I don't care about people. Like I just don't want to deal with them. You know, basically what's going on right here is that we have Lily spiritual love and it's paired with the the seven of pentacles. There are in a way spiritual lessons that need to be taught to you now in your relationships in order for it to translate into your career and to in, into more career fulfillment. They kind of go back and forth like that. There's kind of an exchange of energy in that way. Um, not saying that like what's coming in next is going to be more career focused or there's going to be a balance of both. It's more that you need to kind of go through the relationship channel and then kind of come out on the other end into the career world. But with spiritual love, there are a lot of spiritual lessons that you will be learning. That's something that's coming in that is going to be really important. I think I'm an instrument of peace. One thing that you're going to be learning is how um, how much you are of, how do I put this? You're the piece of the puzzle that actually brings peace. Get it? Piece of the puzzle. Um, you're literally the piece of the puzzle. Um, yeah, and you're learning this through through your kind of like spiritual lessons through this particular group that you're um, kind of encountering. It's also kind of one of those things where you're learning how peaceful you can feel without career aspirations or without career goals or something like that. So with unfulfilled, it's kind of like there's one on one level with the spiritual love card. Your guides are saying that we do still love you. We do care about you. We want the best for you. It's just right now, they don't want you to waste your time with this career stuff, waiting and waiting for something to grow that's not going to grow, basically, at least in this point in time. They're, they're kind of trying to get you off of that kind of... Um, 
<laughs> in the most loving way, I feel like what's coming next to you, they're kind of saying like, we don't want you to get too obsessed with money. You know, life is not all about money. Life is not all about your career and focus a little bit more on your relationships, your connections with people and really get in tune with that peacemaker that you, that you kind of are. And I feel like it's something that maybe a lot of you used to be very peaceful as well, or you used to kind of be more in touch with your peaceful side, but maybe lately you've been feeling more hard or, um, more tough basically in this kind of and it's interesting because we see this here with this woman and she is kind of like dancing at the bottom of this card i don't know if you can see that um but she is kind of being very very flexible in this situation what is that shock of that i think that is the solar plexus i'm reading it as the solar plexus um but the solar plexus chakra is here in the middle of this card in the first quarter moon in aries and because it's a quarter moon, it just means that like there is, a, this is a transition phase. You know, it's not at the peak. It's not at the beginning. This is a transition phase into another state of being. So don't expect the next things that you're attracting into your life to be that kind of, um, we see that again here with temporary situation to be that much of a, a thing that's going to last for a really long time. Like I wouldn't get too comfortable with the new friend group coming in or the new people coming in or the, the, the ties that you're kind of um, mending or those kind of like relationship cords that you're kind of mending back together. Because I'm definitely seeing that like part of the reason you're with this group of people in this particular moment is to show them how like you can create peace in that environment or that world or that that kind of like amongst people or amongst kind of like social connections, you know. With opportunities are waiting for you, this is really interesting because I definitely see this. Is, there's a lot of transition energy going on, just so you guys know. It's kind of like the cards are saying, in order to kind of get unstuck in this career department, you're going to have to make some switches in your social life, kind of move through those switches and kind of come out the other end with blessings that are, you know, going to be in the highest, in the highest, um, highest realm for you. The thing is your guides and stuff want to tell you that like, this is going to be a easy transition. This is going to be a fun transition. This is not going to be difficult or hard. These social connections are not going to be a struggle. They're not going to be painful. We have the sun card here representing that the next thing coming into your life is a period of happiness, joy, love, creativity, um, even success. But I'm seeing it as more of a social success, you know, and with temporary situation, this is just saying that this this happiness, this happiness can continue into the rest of your life. But with temporary situation, they're saying that right now they want to just shine so much joy and light into your life and kind of give you that energy and that vibe to be that instrument of peace in your relationships. With step into your power, it's interesting here because I definitely see this is going to be a very empowering time for you stepping into this role. I think there's going to be certain situations, certain little moments of you being the diplomat that's going to kind of create a sense of like power and sense of um, security in yourself that you can really handle anything, right? This with the spiritual love here, it's basically saying like for, instead of your career for right now, we're focusing on spiritual lessons. So, and with opportunities are waiting for you with this social thing, I think this social group or this group that you're going into, or you're kind of um, being the peacemaker for this specific group, friend group, I definitely see that like, um, with opportunities are waiting for you, this friend group is going to lead to the next opportunity. It's going to lead to the next step specifically in your career. And also with forgiveness, it might not be that you need to forgive someone from a friend group, although that is that is going to be true for a lot of you, but that you're kind of bridging forgiveness within the group. You're kind of getting one member of the group to forgive another member of the group. And in, 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 in so doing, you're creating like a peace and a cohesion and a very wonderful sense of like friendships and camaraderie within this group of people. For some of you, I'm even getting the vibe that like, if you're a manager at your job or you are you are higher a higher up and you work and you work with a team of people this is for some of you your job might actually not be getting that much revenue and you might be thinking like well what's the next way i can make revenue or make money in this job or this career and the cards are kind of urging you spend time with the people below you spend time with your quote unquote subordinates right because they're the ones who are going to kind of create that that joy and that energy in the work environment I feel like also the people in your work environment, if this example is applying to you, that they're going to have opportunities for you in a sense that they're going to be the ones kind of creating and thinking of the new ideas for the job and the, the new like 
career that you're in. Basically, I see that what is kind of needed in that specific situation is to work with your people below you and in a way kind of get them to all have fun with each other, kind of create like you can even have like a mini celebration for them or a mini get together or something like that. I feel like there's some forgiveness that needs to be exchanged between these members of this group. But basically, once they're all kind of happy and in, in joy of the like situation and under, being under you as a boss, basically with opportunities are waiting for you, it's interesting because I see that they're going to be the ones coming up with the great, great business ideas, you know, and you're going to kind of brainstorm with this group of people and kind of create ideas for the future of your success of your business where you kind of currently feel unfulfilled. So for a lot of you, this is kind of like a solution, you know, and for others of you who it's the career and the social social life is not totally related. I'm definitely saying that they are actually related. You might think they're not, you know, but they actually are. There's something along the lines of just letting loose, having fun, forgetting about your career for a while, taking a break from it. And then through those connections, opportunities will slowly start to manifest the more you step into your power, the more you become this kind of embodiment of peace, this embodiment of spiritual love. Very cool. I think that's about all I have for you guys today. Um, I really enjoyed reading for you. If you enjoyed this reading, please like or comment below. If you um, really enjoyed this reading, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I post pick a cards like this once every one to two weeks. And with that said, we're going to move on to the next group with the Blue Kyanite, group two. Hey, group two. This is if you picked the um, Blue Kyanite right here. Really pretty show. Let's see if I can get the shine in it. Yeah, it's a really pretty stone. I have some right here actually on my table. You guys have probably seen this crystal in tons of my readings before if you're familiar with my channel because I like to have this crystal around me. It's just one of my favorites. Um, all right, let's get into your reading. Just as always, if you guys want to skip the shuffling, feel free to scroll ahead to when all the cards are laid out and uh, I will get into the reading then. Uh, but if you want to stick around for the shuffling and maybe some of the small talk, feel free to do so. Okay, so your first card, we're getting a Moonology Manifestation card. And I told this to the other group, if you guys have any ideas for um, tarot decks that you would like to see on this channel, or I'm not saying that I'll buy them, but um, just ideas are really good because I'm looking to expand for some new decks on the channel. So if you see any from other channels that you really like, or you think that would work well with my reading style, uh, feel free to comment those below. So your first thing is Last Quarter Moon in Taurus, be proud of yourself. And we're going to draw a Love Story Oracle card. This one wants to come out. It's kind of sticking out here. And for our Love Story Oracle card, we have Spark. Wow. And we're also going to pull a Career card. We're going to see what is happening in the career sector as well. I'm pulling, trying to pull a more well-rounded reading for this just to see whatever blessings want to come through, whatever needs to be the focus, we can kind of see that in this reading. Okay, feel like drawn from the top. Okay, and we have unreliable. And let's get some tarot cards. And I also want to pull some of these. <laughs> I gotta swung that at you guys. Um, some tea leaf oracle cards. Oh, I got three right next to each other. I think I'm gonna take all of those. stuff is in the shot and let's see what you got so we have um four of wands we also have grasshopper situations in the balance that require careful handling we also have the magician and we have with the magician we have turkey someone is behaving stupidly and then we also have knight of cups with Rooster, an arrogant, boastful person you should not cross. That's kind of an interesting combination with those two. Oh, and I also want to get you a Crystal Wisdom card. We'll pull that card right now. Okay, we have 
ancient wisdom crystal. I am an expression of the powerful ancient wisdom of my soul. It guides me through life. And it looks like that it has those little triangles on it. Wow. Okay. So group two, you have some power. You are packing a punch. Okay. I'm just going to get right into the reading because I'm seeing, I looked, I was looking over the reading for a little bit and I'm seeing some different things. There's a couple of different messages for different types of people who picked this pile. So I'll be getting into all of those. Um, let's start with first, just kind of the balance that we have the love card and the finance card. Mainly your next thing that you're going to be attracting into your life is love, is a connection, is, um, with the spark card, there's some kind of intense passion that you're sparking with someone um, that's coming in for you. There's going to be a kind of like a more of a lusty kind of like very um, fiery connection. So something very like passionate and um, swoon worthy is coming to mind, like kind of the idea of just like falling head over heels or something along those lines with four of wands here. I'm seeing this as more of like a twin flame type of card. So if you, if twin flame resonates with you and you've been manifesting your twin flame with the magician card, I'm seeing here something along the lines of like someone is coming in that you have been, there's a lot of like wand energy. We have a wand and the magician. We have the two matches in the spark card and we have the four um, wands and the four of wands card. So there's something along the lines of like Maybe you guys, even some of you, this is kind of, I don't know if you if you guys resonate with this, but maybe some of you even have like a magic wand and you've been casting spells with this particular magic wand. It's been working like wonders for you. But I'm definitely seeing it with besides that, if you have the wand or not, with the magician card, I feel like a lot of you have really gotten in tune in, in tune in with your manifestation powers, your manifestation abilities. And one of the things that I'm seeing is that you're kind of, with someone who's behaving stupidly, there is, and with so and also with situations of balance that require carefully handling, there is a little bit of a almost like how do I put this? There's almost like a, a it's, it's almost like a recklessness in your manifestation powers and like what you've been doing. But at the same time, there is also a counterbalance to this point where it's like you're the one who's kind of like the one who has to manifest things into other people's lives to keep this kind of like balance, basically. For a lot of you, for most of you, it's not that you're attracting a kind of romantic connection, but that you're rebuilding a romantic flame from the past. Um, or not, not just, not, sorry, that came out wrong. Not a romantic flame from the past, but a relationship you're currently in. That's what I wanted to say. Um, basically with the four of wands, I see you having a lot of fun in this relationship. I see you having a really like joyous, like amazing time with situations in the balance that require careful handling. One thing that I'm seeing is that although you guys are having a lot of fun, there's a lot of laughter, there's a lot of joy, there's a lot of kind of like celebration. There might even be a wedding involved. Sometimes I see the four of wands as a wedding. Um, but this is something that requires very careful handling. I see that at the same time, you're so in tune with your manifestation abilities. One thing that's going to be coming in for you, if it has not already, is this ability to manifest whatever you want. And when I'm telling you whatever you want, it's going to, you're going to be so in tune with your ability to get things in the next upcoming period of your life. It's going to be like, you're going to kind of be shocked by like how easy it is to kind of manifest these things. I see you kind of starting small and then building into bigger things. Now, with someone who's behaving stupidly, this is quite interesting because I see on one hand, there's two things coming in for this kind of um, reading. There's basically saying, this is kind of like a warning, right? That you don't want to manifest things that you don't want it to get out of control, right? Like you're being given a, a very strong amount of a heavy dose of power, basically, this kind of power to be able to get what you want when you want it, um, whenever you want it, basically. Um, and basically what the cards are trying to show you is that um, you do have with ancient wisdom crystal, you do have the wisdom to make the wise choices in this situation. So Turkey and wisdom are kind of conflicting on on at each other kind of in this way, where it's just where it's saying don't get too reckless in making these manifestations come true. I see that Without the careful planning that goes into these manifestations, I'm seeing that, and without your own innate wisdom, I see that like a lot of things could happen, like accidents. Um, I'm not not like bad, not like too bad of accidents. It's just like things could happen that are very undesirable because you kind of jump the gun too quickly, basically. Be proud of yourself is just saying like for many of you who are not 
or not many of you, but for those of you who are not in a relationship at this time, being proud of yourself of your growth in your journey through the previous relationships you've had or the growth you've done in those relationships or the lessons you've learned, being really proud of yourself because last quarter moon in Taurus means that this is kind of like ending. It's kind of an ending point and it's kind of coming back full circle. And basically what I'm kind of getting at here is that this is kind of a period to kind of close out certain things in your life and specifically with the relationship with relationships because someone new is coming in right and this is a great time to manifest that new person now there is kind of a thing here uh with the knight of cups interestingly enough um this could be someone along your journey because i'm seeing this knight of cups kind of represented like along the journey where one thing you don't want to use your manifestation abilities for, because it, it, it's urging you kind of, there's kind of an, an aspect of using it for people to kind of help people that are kind of in positions of, how do I put this, um, that are like down on their luck, you know? Um, and uh, with the situations in the balance that require careful handling, I'm seeing in a way you're kind of, when it comes to manifesting for others, it's you're kind of looking at this aspect of, what can I manifest for them without kind of overstepping the bounds into like their life? Basically, I'm seeing that like it is important that you manifest for others in this period. You know, you're kind of thinking about them instead of turning this ability on yourself. You're also thinking about them and the, the welfare of them. But I am seeing another warning here with the rooster card. It's saying that there is going to be someone coming into your life or people that are already in your life that with an arrogant, boastful person, you should not cross. This is just basically saying that someone who's kind of in a way arrogant or boastful that is in your life life currently um, they could represent kind of be represented as a romantic figure for some of you very select some of you it's not going to be all of you this is going to be the person you're already in a relationship if you're in that relationship um, but for most of you this will be a person either outside that relationship or if you're not even in a relationship someone that's different or new um, this is someone who always has something to say on any given subject like they kind of have how do I put this if you bring up you know, water slides or something. They have something to say about water slides. They have an opinion about water slides. You know, if you bring up something along the lines of like uh, your favorite food or something, they're going to have an opinion on that type of food or something like that. This person is always going to have an opinion on something and feel they're going to feel very free in sharing those opinions. That's kind of one thing I'm seeing with this person. This person might also be prone to fits of rage or kind of like bur outbursts of anger. And I'm definitely seeing here that like this person is basically just saying do not manifest for this person that is the one person you probably should not manifest for because i'm seeing that it it could kind of backfire it's kind of like how do i put this you're kind of learning how to see the boundaries between what your quote unquote spell casting or manifesting is doing with others there's kind of people that like you're realizing like oh if i do this try to manifest for them it's going to backfire on me right it's going to backfire on me and kind of create this kind of chaotic situation and that's where it's kind of exercising caution. But your guides are kind of saying that you're ready for this. You're ready for this kind of power. You're ready for this kind of responsibility. Um, there's something that's been in your minds, most of you, for a lot of you, is a sense of sympathy and empathy for others. For a long time, you've been feeling, um, how do I put this? It's almost like you've been seeing people suffer in your life and you've been wanting to help them. You've been thinking of a way to help them or wanting to reach out or do something for that person. With the magician card here, it's saying this is where you're coming upon a time where you have the tools to create that balance between your inner world and outer world. Um, I'm saying that one thing that's going to be very beneficial with these people is to manifest in a general way for others and maybe more of a specific way for yourself. So for example, manifesting things for others like I want them to be happy or I want them to feel joy. And then for yourself being like, I want to manifest, you know, I want to manifest getting $5, finding $5 in the road or finding $5 in the street or something like that. Or I want to manifest getting, um, you know, someone giving me a free coffee at work or at, at the coffee shop or something like that. So I'm definitely seeing that like, Manifesting specific for yourself and general for others is going to be really beneficial. The only kind of situation where I would say manifest for someone else in a specific way is if you're working with your current spouse, because I feel like this person you're so close with, for all of you that are in a relationship, this person, you're going to be so close with them that manifesting for them is going to work very, very well. Now, this is where you also have to be careful because I'm seeing that 
Um, this is kind of where it gets tricky because I'm seeing also that with that reflection, right, where you're learning that casting and using manifesting abilities on certain people, it's going to kind of come back at you in a negative way. What I'm seeing here with Grasshopper and the Four of Wands is that it's, it's, it's good to work carefully through these things with your significant other and make sure you're on a really good communication basis. For those of you going back to the beginning of the reading who are coming in to play with this spark person, I see that this person is coming into your life because you manifested them. And this is kind of the awakening that kind of gets you kind of thinking like, wow, I can actually do this. Like I actually manifested a person into my life that I'm really like attached to, that I really connected with, that there's a huge crazy spark with, you know, I'm definitely seeing that it's just basically saying like, just be careful with the rest of your manifestations because you're kind of realizing it works or this kind of method works for you. And also be proud of yourself. There's something coming through where it's really important to be proud of your abilities and where how you, how far you've come and where you're growing because these kind of gifts that are being given to you right now or that's the kind of next thing coming in is, is meant to be a reward. Um, I'm seeing with finances, with unreliable, um, something that's coming through with unreliable. And I kind of, when this card came out, I was in... in I was feeling like discounting it a little bit. And that happens sometimes when I pull out cards and like that doesn't jive with everything else. But this is just kind of a, a thing that's basically saying the main things that are going to be um, working in your life are love and relationships. And something that's going to be kind of difficult to manifest maybe is money or something like that. Or kind of maybe your money or finances seem a little unreliable. Now you could manifest money and I, could, I see that working for you. But with unreliable, I just see that Money in general, in the most general sense, is going to be kind of slow to be coming in. Yeah, with Grasshopper, it's here. I'm thinking of like martial arts and I'm thinking of how it's, it's, you have to be very careful when you're sparring with an opponent to block the correct moves and hit at the right times. And so with this Four of Wands card, I'm seeing that it's, it's really important to time things very well with your partner if you're in a relationship, um, to time out when you're going to approach them or when you're going to hang out with them or when you're going to spend time with them. And kind of like even in conversation, timing is going to be important. Timing when you interject your opinion, what time do you interject your opinion versus what time do you need to listen to them, right? There's a kind of a, there's a sense of chi as well, like here, like getting in, exploring your own inner inner sense of energy and the flow of that energy. And with Ancient Wisdom Crystal, this is something that's coming through really strong with Be Proud of Yourself. One thing I want to just wrap up the reading real quick you should be very proud of yourself of all the wisdom you've achieved through life. If you're kind of in this, watching this reading and you're thinking like, oh no, I gotta be careful. What, what if I you know, do something wrong or something like that? Ancient Wisdom Crystal is here to show you that you have powerful ancient wisdom running through you, not just from your lifetime and the things you've learned from your lifetime, but from your ancestors' lifetimes. And that's something that's coming through really strongly is that you have your ancestors' generational wisdom passed through you in, in a spiritual sense that whenever you manifest something, it will be in your highest good and it will be in the highest good for the generations to come. It's just saying like, remember that ancient wisdom. Remember kind of like something that could be very beneficial too is like remembering your family values. Like what does your family value? What is the kind of things that um, your, the people that you love and care about, the people that have taught you things in this lifetime, what were things that they value? About those people that you respected, what are things they valued? And kind of really realizing that you should be proud of yourself for not just learning those lessons, but learning your own lessons, learning your own pieces of wisdom. Manifest from that wisdom and everything will go correctly. Everything will go beautifully. It'll, it won't, there won't be a, there won't be a, dry eye in the house. What am I trying to say? You're not going to make people cry, but there's, <laughs> there's, there's going to basically be like, I, th I definitely see like a really strong spiritual kind of component to the next thing coming in for you, what you're kind of attracting right now. Cause really what you're attracting is like power and spiritual power and manifestation ability for a lot of you. That's going to come with a partner that a partner's coming into your life. And they might even be the one to show you some of this magical ability. They might be the one to show you kind of like what you're missing or how to manifest or something like that. For others of you, you're gaining more power and manifestation and it's going to benefit your relationship tenfold. All right, I think that's about it for this reading. Um, if you enjoyed this reading, liked or enjoyed it, uh, please like or comment below. If you really enjoyed this reading, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I post pick a cards like this once every one to two weeks. With that said, we're going to move on to group three with the Amber. Thank you guys again so much for watching. Hey, group three, this is if you picked the um, Amber. 
such a cool kind of like not really a stone it's more like sap i think tree sap um but i hear it's good with depression weirdly enough amber does not work for me like that amber does not work to cure my depression that that um easily but i hear that it's good for depression i like amber though because it's super lightweight and it just has a good vibe to it in general so let's get into your reading um, I'm going to pull the cards right now. I'm going to be shuffling on camera today. If you want to skip the shuffling, feel free to scroll ahead to when the cards are laid out and the reading will begin there. And um, yeah, uh, I will look forward to seeing you there. If you want to keep to the shuffling or you want to watch the shuffling and hear some of the small talk, um, feel free to stay as I shuffle the cards and lay them out. Trust the universe, first quarter moon in Aquarius. Feeling like pulling the career card first. All the other groups got their love card first. So I'm pulling these career and love cards just to kind of um, see what is going to be the thing that is emphasized as the next thing coming in, you know, because it could be, you know, career or love or spirituality or anything. So I'm getting a lot of cards just to kind of get the vibe of what this kind of thing is. And we have denial. A lot of people are getting more of the negative career cards um, that that are coming to this reading, uh, which I think is quite interesting. Because I know I have, you know, I feel like a lot of people are curious about career at this particular time as I'm posting this video. But maybe, you know, when this video goes up, there's not going to be. We'll see. I, I, denial might mean something else. I have to like see what the rest of the cards, what it means. And for our love card, we have, this one wants to come out. We have regret. Interesting. Okay, so let's see. Now we're going to pull some tarot cards. A lot of purple in this group. It's making me think of the crown chakra. This one wants to come out and I'm putting it right in the middle, temperance. And we also have another one. We have queen of cups. And does another one want to fly out? This is a lot of intuitive and spiritual energy. We do have another one. And we have King of Cups. Wow. Wow. A lot of like intuitive, emotional, spiritual energy coming through. For you guys, this is probably going to be some kind of spiritual awakening or something along those lines or spiritual advancement with yourselves. Okay, let's see. Let's pull these two cards right here. And we're gonna get one more I'm going to pull from the bottom of this bag. Have this one right here. Um, let's see. Okay, let's flip over your tea leaf cards. We have Queen of Cups with Bat. Take care, enemies are working against you. Interesting. And Temperance, we have Star, Guaranteed Success, and King of Cups, Wall Misunderstanding. Oh, and I also want to get a Crystal Wisdom card. This definitely, I'm really glad I pulled it for the last group because it was the card that kind of tied everything together. So let's see what Crystal Wisdom card needs to come through. For this group. I have to pull it for this group. And we have this card. Pre-Night. So that's the Stone of Pre-Night. You guys have probably seen this crystal on my channel before. I trust myself in the divine flow of the universe. Yeah, there's... I mean, it's kind of reiterating what this card says, where it says, trust the universe. So that's kind of like a pretty important message. 
there's a lot of correlations here. Like first with the temperance card and the trust the universe card, we have the third eye symbol here and there, her third eye or her crown is lit up. And I'm definitely seeing a lot of purples here. Um, and then there's also a lot of blues in the tarot cards representing kind of like communication. And then also you have the crown and the third eye. So this is a very um, spiritual, something very spiritual and powerful is going to happen to you guys. Let me look at the cards and we'll get into the reading. Wow. This is a pretty powerful reading. Um, let me get right into it. So we have a few things here. Um, basically on the right side of the table, we have denial and the wall, the misunderstanding, which I'm thinking of walls as like a barrier and denial is kind of like ignoring something. And we also have the king of cups. There is some kind of aspect of your energy and it's interesting because I see you as watching my channel, like I'm reading you as like a very extremely intuitive, spiritual person, someone who, um, you know, they just kind of know what's up without really knowing how they know what's up, basically, you know. Um, but I'm definitely seeing on one hand, too, with bat, take care, enemies are working against you. This could... I, I was taking this a little literally, like with the enemies working against you, that there could be people who are kind of trying to like bring you down in this particular point in your life. But it's almost like the way I'm seeing it is it's kind of like how your perception of who your enemies are, not necessarily who's actually working against you, right? So it's like your perception of like where it says take care, enemies are working against you. This is kind of kind of coming into play as like your perception of the situation, right? And what it's what it's leading you is with temperance here representing balance, you know, in this triangle in her her dress representing like a balancing point, right? There's energy on this side that's very, very heavy, right? Like this is some very heavy queen of cups energy. But the thing is you need to balance it out with this king of cups energy. It's interesting because not too many people have this kind of di dynamic in them. Um, and... It's basically saying that like you are able to coexist on both sides of the intuitive spectrum. Um, how do I put this better than that? It's just kind of like, for example, I'm just going to use a general example for this reading. Um, I think you guys are going to know what this means. Um, but with King of Cups and Queen of Cups, it's like you have both the masculine side of intuition and the feminine side of intuition. So you have the ability to kind of like... Um, let me just, I'll just cover these, these personalities real quick and kind of how I see these personalities in general, as far as like as intuitive components of a person, you know? Okay. So with King of Cups here, we have someone who has to learn to remain centered in themselves, right? Because they're always in kind of like emergency or chaotic situations. You know, that's kind of generally how I see the King of Cups because he's kind of in the middle of this ocean, right? And he's kind of sitting on this this in this throne, but there's water all around him. There's a ship in the background. He's kind of coming out of the the realms of the unconscious, the pure, like unabridged kind of like inside the mind, sub, like unconscious mind, basically. The King of Cups is extremely psychic, extremely intuitive, mainly on a sense of like understanding their dreams, right? They're so connected to their subconscious because they're living in that world. They're surrounded by that world um, that they're very aware of how to like navigate through it. With the Queen of Cups, on the other hand, she's more of like an analytical intuitive, but like still feminine in, in a sense of like She's in the Queen of Cups I see is kind of like because she's on the ocean, she's on the beach. It's like she's barely touching the subconscious, right? She's kind of has one foot in the subconscious world and one foot in reality. And in a way, she's the bridge between the two of them. She's kind of the communicator of the, the intuitive world meets the world of reality. So she's kind of a good person who can bring ideas into practical form. She can bring intuitive ideas into practical form, or she can take practical things in the real world and shift them and bring them into her own subconscious right or her unconscious mind also i see her with this kind of look of concentration i'll show you on her face um and that this ornate kind of structure she's trying to figure out how it all works right she's in the process of trying to learn how it works you know um very similar to a page but different in the sense that she's at the point of almost mastering it right she's kind of focused on this puzzle and she has this confused look on her face because she's pondering conundrums. She's pondering kind of things in life that don't make sense or things in life that are that seem extraordinary or out there, just 
kind of, um, how do I put this? Things that could be like undeniably bizarre that just have no rational explanation for them. You know, this is the kind of focused and interest stuff that she's interested in. The King of Cups, on the other hand, is just kind of, I'm seeing him as a full, complete dreamer. Like, he is so disconnected from reality. And in a way, with denial and this misunderstanding, this is kind of representing a side of you that you're disconnected from as well. And it's almost like with that, take care, enemies are working against you. With the Queen of Cups being one foot in the intuitive world and one foot in reality, it's like you're going back and forth between the intuitive world and the real world. And you're kind of with the enemies that are working against you. It's kind of like you feel like there's these people outside of yourself that are kind of attacking you or kind of getting on your nerves or are there people who are threatening to you or are there people who you see as enemies. And what I'm seeing here is there's almost like a situation where especially with regret here, there's a situation where you're kind of bouncing back and forth between worlds, you know, kind of like, almost like trying to control your environment in a sense, or like trying to attack those enemies or trying to, you know, try to figure those enemies out. Figuring them out is coming off really strongly because of the look of concentration on her face. It's like you're trying to figure out their motives, figure out their actions. Where are they coming from? What are they doing? This can become, come into play like, um, in like a typical, like suspicious intuition where you're thinking like, you know what, like, I think that person is going to get me in this way, or I think that person's going to be like this. It's kind of using your intuition to deal with like baser instincts or baser motives. And so with the queen of cups here, it's interesting because there is an element of kind of like confusing reality with fantasy, just, but, but only because you're not in tune, this is going to get confusing. Sorry, guys. Not, because you're not in tune with your unconscious mind and the world of your dreams and stuff like that. It's like there's two types of intuition. There's kind of that analytical intuition, and then there's that really deep, subconscious, unconscious, dreamlike intuition that is kind of coming through. Um, and so basically being in this kind of area where you're working with these kind of people or you're kind of get, you're trying to get the one up on these people, basically. With regret, I'm seeing that it's kind of you're learning that your instincts are just kind of off or something like that. And that's kind of like with regret, I'm seeing something that's coming through that's going to be a really big gift. Um, and that's the next thing coming through for you. Next thing coming on its way is this sense of regret, right? And with the crown chakra, the colors bleeding down under their arms, you know, I'm definitely seeing something along the lines of, you know, a divine this is going to sound really weird because I'm not saying that angels or guides are trying to make you feel guilty or anything like that, but they're giving you a sense of understanding of what you kind of have done, if that makes sense. Um, and not that you've done anything bad. It's just saying that it's like, it's giving you kind of an understanding of your life up to this point and kind of like how you've progressed in your journey along those lines. And so with and basically, it's kind of like there's also a sense of regret coming of like, why didn't I tap into this energy sooner? Why didn't I tap into the world of my dreams sooner? Why didn't I tap into my deeper subconscious sooner? Um, because I see that with denial here, there's kind of like you're realizing that you had this kind of sense of denial for this aspect of yourself. And I'm even seeing that with this next stage in life, kind of wanting to kind of connect with this aspect of yourself, there is a sense of not only just dis denial, but a sense of misunderstanding with that part of yourself. You're kind of learning to, how do I put this? trust that part of yourself again, you know, but it's like you're you're willing to put in the work is what I'm seeing. And I think you have this epiphany through a kind of third eye, like either meditation or experience that you're having. And you're kind of learning like, wow, I really am disconnected from myself. And I'm kind of, you know, I'm wrapped up in all these petty concerns and these these people that don't mean like anything to me, you know, and I'm just worried. I'm worried about these people that are really in the long run insignificant. Like these people that you think are your enemies, basically the cards are saying that you're going to realize these people are kind of insignificant in the, in the bigger picture of things, right? It's kind of like a waste of your energies to constantly be like fighting against these enemies that are not really like they're there, you know, and they, they might be like antagonistic to you, to you, or you might be antagonistic to them, or there might just be a, a sense of tension or something. Um, Whatever the reason, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's basically saying it's kind of a waste of your potential in a sense. And with trust the universe, I see you kind of opening up to more universal ways of experiencing the world, right? Because I'm seeing that this kind of epiphany that comes from something higher than yourself, you're realizing like, okay, this is kind of like this sense of regret. It's not just a sense of regret. It's not like the angels, like I said earlier, it's not like your angels and guides are saying like, oh, you know, 
<laughs> like feel bad about what you have done. You know, it's not really like that. It's like this sense of like regret that almost like with the thing with the the water kind of almost like space water dripping down from her. I'm seeing this is almost like you could have moments of like crying or kind of a breakthrough of kind of like a breakdown of like, whoa, I've really been ignoring this part of myself for so long. One thing that I'm seeing though, is that one thing that you have that's going to be really beneficial through this transformation. Wow. This is a very like mental pile. Um, mental in the sense that it's like spiritual and kind of like dealing with a lot of stuff of the mind. Um, with first quarter moon in Aquarius, trust the universe. I'm seeing that like this is the beginning of a journey in trusting and fulfilling kind of like what the universe asks of you, right? With temperance here, this is a very heavy, with temperance being an angel, this is a very heavy driven divine intervention to rebalance yourself, right? That's kind of in general, the next thing coming in. Temperance is all about rebalancing. She's mixing these two cups, the water between them to create balance between them. She's kind of creating a sense of chemistry between these two almost seemingly opposing or different intuitive viewpoints. And she's combining them together because she's kind of saying like, it's all really one big picture. You know, it's all really one big thing. And with pre-night, I trust myself in the divine flow of the universe. I'm seeing that naturally one thing that's coming through with for you, because like I said, you might try to access this part of yourself once you realize kind of that it's, you know, you have been ignoring it, you know, but what I'm seeing with the temperance card is this is kind of going to get balanced out naturally, right? Just the fact that you have, that you're aware of it and the universe is kind of, kind of going to slowly get you in touch with this side of yourself, right? You have the star card right here, guaranteed success. That means with this process, you're guaranteed to rebalance yourself. You're guaranteed to basically become a kind of whole person. You're, you're guaranteed to take those two aspects of your intuition and meld them together into a cohesive unit. Um, it's really beautiful what's coming for you. And I'm really happy I get to deliver this message for you. Yeah, you will be getting a lot of downloads to your crown chakra and stuff with the regret card. And it's almost going to be like with the denial card as well. You might want to deny this message coming from you from the universe. Like it might almost be a little bit painful in a sense because it's like you've just been there's been a wall for so long against your subconscious mind. There's been a, like a barrier for so long because you've blocked off these um, these kind of emotions. Right. Um, you know, it's you're kind of using that. You're kind of like using this Queen of Cups energy to kind of take care of these enemies before they cause an emergency rather than being in tune with your subconscious mind, which would give you a piece of calm within the storm, right? You would see the storm around you and you would feel centered and calm while watching everything around you unfold, basically. Um, and so there's kind of like a balance, you know, instead of being back and forth, because this energy right here with this Queen of Cups and this this bat card, it's it. I can see it being very exhausting. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you feel very tired all the time or um, just exhausted, basically. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely seeing that you're kind of this sense of regret or this kind of feeling of, it's not, it's, it's almost like guilt, but it's not. It's just kind of like regret that you didn't work on this sooner. It's kind of like creating a sense of like purification or it's like watering, it's like cleansing you essentially from that kind of stress and that emotional tension and stuff like that. The most important thing though is you don't want to deny it, deny it, right? Like denial is going to make it kind of worse if you kind of push back a little bit on this. It's like, trust the universe. The angels are working for you. There's so many messages about trusting the universe and guaranteed success. This is something that is like a transformation or a unification. I'll just say unification because it's unifying two different things. Um, a unification that's bringing you guaranteed success. I think you're going to be surprised at how much of an empowered being you're going to be after this whole process. And this process might take quite a bit to integrate these two sides of yourself because we do have a wall here and we have misunderstanding, which means you're so disconnected from this side of yourself that there are some misunderstandings with trying to understand it right off the bat. I think that's why you've relied so much on this component of yourself. So, um, but get ready because the universe is kind of going to show you the way. And I don't think they're going to be too harsh or critical with you. I think that they're going to show you in a very gentle, loving way. Temperance is a very loving card. Um, it is a card about being balanced. I do see a few cards about being balanced. So something that might help you is keeping your life balanced, making sure you don't overinvest in one compartment or another at the expense of a different part of your life, keeping all those areas balanced, even keeping your body balanced. Temperance can talk about that with the health 
keeping your body balanced with um, like diet and exercise, making sure you're putting the right things into your body. A lot of this stuff is going to be very beneficial in, in unifying these two aspects of yourself. Okay, so <laughs> that was quite a reading. Um, but it's over now, and if you liked and enjoyed it, please like or comment below. If you really enjoyed this reading, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I post pick a cards like this once every one to two weeks. With that said, that was the last group for today. I really enjoyed reading for you guys. It was a pleasure. Have a good day or night wherever you are, and I will see you in the next pick a card. Bye.